Hey guys, as you might imagine, I love business opportunities. I think, you know, I've had a store before and unknown to most of you guys, even when we were paying rent, it was a profitable store for the last 60 days. And it looked like it could continue to make money. Uh, things, and this is the crazy part. For the most part, during the pandemic, it was a terrible time to own a store because distributors picked favorites. Before the pandemic, I actually had a store in a different location and it was doing really, really well. Uh, packs were $2. I remember packs were $2 and I remember they raising it to $2.25. A pack of Pokemon. This included Unbroken Bond, Cosmic Eclipse, a lot of Unified Mind. Uh, these cards were really, really cheap and these tins were just like nothing, right? It was like $7 for a tin and you get free packs of Pokemon in the tin. Many of them older packs. I think uh, some of the Gengar tins I had have generation packs, and I was buying them for seven, eight dollars a tin. Now, what happened with Pokemon is pretty crazy: the rise and then the scalping. So, in a scalper environment, the local game store is going to make more margins and profit. I know a lot of local game stores made out like crazy, but Many of them also over leveraged because they thought this money could continue forever from the pandemic. Stimulus money, PPP low for forgiven money. You know, there's a lot of money, right? There's a lot of money out there and no one's going to say that there's not. At the time, everyone and their grandmother was just spending, spending, spending as if uh, there was no tomorrow. And maybe in some aspects, there's no tomorrow for these game stores. These game stores are in a lot of... Um, trouble and it's not always um it's not always uh obvious why uh, sometimes you invest in a bunch of funko figures and sometimes you the funko figures don't go well and there is no no way to get around it uh, the funko figures are just not selling and you cannot you know it's a bad investment uh, you know, sometimes you, you give into the FOMO and you buy something and you shouldn't buy it. And you already know, you initially already know it's a bad investment. Then you make the investment and then it turns out to be a bad investment. But I ask, why am I so interested in local game stores? Well, uh, I've always wanted to own one. I had owned one for a long time and I do miss owning one. So my local game store has been shut down. Since I seriously started dating, which was around Fennekin Day, which was, I think, May, late May, I had shut down my game store, unwinded everything, and it was only like a half a month or a month of rent left. And it, it didn't really matter to me. Um, it was a good experience. I learned a lot about retail. I learned a lot about... There's another business model I'm going to show you here where they're trying to sell it for $400,000. It's an online rip and ship business model with no brick and mortar. I'm starting to recognize that that might be the new... I was actually listening to Jeff Wilson from Sports Card Investor and his explanation of his like new store would be live streaming he would actually have like four live streamer breakers right and then a breaking if you buy a box you can break there and they would be live streaming 24 hours a day and he mentioned china and india well the reason my girlfriend is so interested in this is obviously she's from china and we have friends down there and they say the live streaming is huge and they can help us uh, but i still want the brick and mortar because I think that's where you live stream from. I, I really did not enjoy live streaming from my home, to be honest. That was not that fun. I have two dogs and a cat, and there's always something happening with them. So there's always some noise level. There's kids and outside. Like, live streaming from a home probably isn't, even at nighttime, it's probably not the quiet, most quiet location. I tried to, you know, I actually hired, I attempted to hire somebody, but her price was like astronomical and I just I ended up doing it myself for a lot cheaper but yeah I might have to just find a sound a room a soundproof room so the room I'm currently making videos in is actually an open room onto my living room so it's the second floor and it's got a cool background it's got lights you know I, I've set up and I have invested in the lighting in the system in the camera the very very expensive camera into the system 
So I can live stream at any time. I sometimes live stream on my other channel, uh, which is a lot better in my opinion um, in terms of viewers and subscribers, but it is what it is. I do want to um, make another very interesting idea. And this is, you know, if you invest in this store, invested $2 million in Funkos, you can see that the rent is very low. And they started in 2015 when Funkos were really valuable, like uh, Holy Grails and so on. Uh, they are saying, oh, well, we have 20,000 followers on social media, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat. Um, you can see that when stores advertise, they're also advertising their social media, which is interesting, right? Uh, in my personal opinion, um, that uh, this is being advertised this way. So maybe like I can. So it gives me inspiration since my store would have a severe advantage in social media just because of the YouTube channel. And that might be enough. You know, maybe what you do is, like Jeff Wilson said something kind of very smart. I don't know if he actually knew what he was saying, but he said it. They are, at, they are a content creation store. They make content. And they just so happen to sell cards. I think that's what you have to understand in today's marketplace. You have to put content first in your store. And then live streaming 24-7, I actually have a friend um, and we are, uh, my girlfriend's going back to China in May and we're going to see that operation. And that operation is done. I mean, China, they live stream 24-7. They got like VTubers and all this stuff and they're selling pineapples, watermelons, toothbrushes. Man, they're selling millions if not billions of dollars via this thing. And I just kind of want to have a store maybe even a studio, build it out, and then live stream. I think that's the, I'm pretty sure that's the way to do it. Most people, mystery boxes, and I'm very anti-mystery box, but every one of these stores has mystery box boxes, fun codes, and I, I bet you they're just making a killing on these mystery boxes because it's kind of fleecing your, your customers, really, but who, who knows, right? Maybe that's just how it goes nowadays in today's economy. The Timmy's all want to get fleeced on mystery boxes. Who, who are you to say no to them? So, yeah, I, uh, a lot of people don't really understand um, in terms of bad investments. And it's it, all it takes is one bad investment. If you invest in Funko figures, for instance, you are effed right now. If you invested in, um, let's say, Dragon Ball Z or something like that, you're pretty effed right now. Because the markets are down, and if the market doesn't go up, um, it can only really, really go down. So anyway, that's my opinion. Bye, guys.